morning, Nasal friends. It's so good to see you from the North Carolina Zoo today in the seabird habitat. Steve's in front of the camera. Megan's filming. We're going inside there with you today. Keeper Melissa is going to be with us to talk about some really neat things that are going on in there with that colony. One really cool thing, four generations of birds. And you have got to stick around to the end. I know you hear that all the time, right? Watch till the end. This time at the end, Keeper Melissa gives them some enrichment and the sounds that you hear coming from the birds is incredible. I hope you can stick around for the length of the video. It's about 30 minutes. All right. Megan, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go see if we can get inside. Great. Melissa. Keeper Melissa. Yes. We are going in. Seabird. Yay. So it's you're yay too? Yes, I love it's going great. in Seabird. Awesome. Megan, are you ready? Yes. We're laughing over because I called Melissa Megan a second ago, but it is what it is. All right. You go through the big gray door. Here we go. Come on in. On half dead. Hi, honey. Going down. <laughs> oh, hi, bird. Yeah, that's AJ. She greets everybody. AJ's right here. Megan, <laughs> Megan, right here. Hello. How cool is that? So this is AJ. This is AJ. She is one of our horned puffins. Very curious. Hi, you want to come say hi? I know. She is um, an imprinted horn puffin, so she doesn't fully understand what it is to be a puffin. Imprinted. And, yep. I've heard that word before. What is Hi. that exactly? So with imprinted animals, it means their, their internal like self picture isn't their species picture. Oh, I love that phrase, internal yeah. self picture. That's great, Melissa. So in AJ's case, she uh, when if she looked in a mirror, she'd see a person. She'd see okay. like me or you. Uh, so when she's in here with the other birds, she's a little confused because she's like, I don't understand why I'm in here with you guys. <laughs> You're not one of me. <laughs> yeah. So we've been working with AJ to help her understand how to socialize like a puffin. Okay. Wow. And how to live with oh. puffins. Um, and she's learned a lot in quite a few years. Nice. So she likes to steal nest material now. <laughs> And she'll interact with the other birds. And she's learning a lot. So she's turning into a puffin. She is turning into a puffin, which is all we could ask for. And you know how old AJ is? 21. What? <laughs> 21? Yep. She is 21 years old. <coughs> You're legal. I know. You could join the army. You could drive. You could go to a bar. <laughs> so many think, options. What do you think, AJ? Sound good to you? What do you think, <laughs> new show friends? What do you think? How cool is that? Right here's a puffin in hand. Hi. She's like, I'm not gonna talk now. You guys are here. I know she was making this. <laughs> your friend, she was making this really cool sound a second ago. Um, literally, it almost sounded like a chainsaw. No joke, it almost sounded like a chainsaw. So maybe we'll get that a little bit later. Might. There's a very good chance she's gonna try to run out that door. So I might have Megan come in. in. Ooh. Right, we got this. So Megan, yep. Megan, get out of the way. She's here. We go. She was eyeballing me. Yep. And I've got to make sure that I'm not gonna fall in. Show them in the water. <laughs> no falling in the no water. No fall. Thank you, Melissa. I got a rule, no falling in the water. Nancy is with us too. Nancy is kind of going to be our person that has to grab stuff if we need it. Yep, and if we so. want to shut that door, we will pop open if we need to. Oh. All right, now we're, we're, we're officially on habitat. Right now we, yeah, we don't have a choice. We have nowhere to go. Oh, yeah, there you go. Wow. <laughs> All right. Melissa, we are totally at your mercy now. <laughs> so be nice to us. Okay. <laughs> I like you, don't worry. Thank you, Melissa. All right. We like you too. Thank you for doing it. We set this up very quickly. We did. Um, which is really cool. So we appreciate your time. No, you don't want to go in there. I know one question that our guests give us a lot yeah. when they come to the zoo. And digital friends hope you become in-person friends one day. Um, the water. Yeah. You when, when we were setting this up, you yep. said, wear a sweat jacket or a sweatshirt. <laughs> yep. It's chilly in here. It's chilly. And the water's cold? Yeah, the water is about 60 degrees, 59, 60 degrees. Oh, there's a bird out of the water. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, it's definitely not ideal. It's cold when we're in there, but we had to be able to balance because the birds live in cold water. Okay. And we have to clean. So we yeah. had to find something cold enough for them, but warm enough for us. So you did just say when you're in there, 
Yeah. You go in the water? Yeah, we scuba dive to clean. You scuba dive <laughs> to clean? The... Yep. Digital friends, what do you think about that one? They scuba dive to clean. Yep. That's got to be chilly. It's chilly. It's, um, I think it's colder than your cold tap water at home. Hmm. Yeah. Really? So, so, you know, and having fun with this, you have to be scuba certified. You yeah. Get, there's all of you that work down here have to be, there's more than just keeping that's going on. It's more than just feeding and there's more than just that. Yep. Scuba certification is a big deal. Yeah. And we go through, it's open water training. So oh. we go through um, rescue diving skills. We go through like just regular dive skills. So mm -hmm. how to put my gear on, how to take it off underwater, um, wow. how to keep your buddy in line. We always dive with a buddy for safety. Mm, there you go. So yeah, it's, I mean, it's essentially just a really big fish tank with birds in it. With so. birds in it and cold water. Yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> really fascinating. Yeah. I love it. Um, one really neat thing, kind of where this came about, we were talking with um, uh, Animal Sally, right? so, yeah, yeah. AMS <laughs> Sally, um, and she said, you know what, we have babies down here and we've got a really cool generational thing yeah but she wouldn't tell me any more details she said you've got to talk to melissa because melissa's got the scoop on who's who out there yeah so now you get to share what does what does she mean by intergenerational thing going on down here so we have a few puffins in here that are some of the original birds in our habitat and oh, wow. That's back in the early 90s. Yeah. Um, 1994, 1995. Oh, okay. So our oldest puffins are 29 and 28 this year. Wow. And um, two of those birds have officially become great-grandparents this year, which is great pretty cool. Great-grandparents? Great-grandparents. So wait, great-grandparent, grandparent, parent. There's four generations There's in here? There's four. I love it. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Yeah. Four digital friends, four generations. I'm trying to see where my babies are at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I don't see them here. Yeah. So that's, I guess that's good. <laughs> they're very good at hiding. Oh. So, there's, so how old are the babies? I'm sorry to interrupt you. How no, the you're good. They're, now I got a math. September, <laughs> October, math. probably about three months old now. Three months yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Hi, Squirt. Well, that's not a puffin. That is not a puffin, and that is not one of our babies. You are not a baby puffin. <laughs> Squirt, you're not a baby puffin. He said, but I'm still little. <laughs> and pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So, because he came up and said, yeah. I hear she came up. Who is this? Squirt is <coughs> our parakeet auklet. Parakeet auklet. Um, and he turned 20 this year. Oh, another older bird. Yeah, so he's little, but that's just how big they get. Um, okay. And he was actually hatched here in the habitat. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a bird with a mess from here. Yeah. That's kind of fun. Parakeet <laughs> auklet. Yeah. From North America? From North the, America. A lot of all the birds in our seabird habitat from North America. Yep. So digital friends, mm -hmm. as Megan zooms in right now, because I'm asking Megan to zoom in if she can, on that puffin, not a penguin. Not a penguin. Not a penguin. It's something we, we battle constantly here at the North. We don't really battle. battle. It is what it is, right? People mm -hmm. understand. But yeah, they're North American. Penguins are, are south of the yep. south of the equator. Yep. So one way to tell a difference. So penguins and polar bears never together. Nope. You might see penguins, you might see polar bears and puffins together. Yeah, for sure. But you will not see penguins. So a little bit of tidbit information for you. <laughs> All right, let's put you to the test. Yep. What are the chances you can find any of those generations? So if you look across the habitat on our left where that green ramp is yep that is octavia and clarence and those are our great grandparents did you say octavia, octavia and clarence, and clarence. <laughs> wow <laughs> we have some okay. fun names let's make sure i'm correct here the two that are under the ramp yep okay Go on. those two so octavia yep. and clarence clarence was actually named for the guide who went on the trip to alaska with our team oh, to wow. bring the birds back that's cool. Yeah. Thank you, Clarence, very much for that. <laughs> and I'm Clarence. pretty sure he was the first puffin collected. Wowzers. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So Octavia we like him. So those are the great grandparents. Those are the great grandparents. And they're doing what great grandparents should do. They're just relaxing, looking over everybody, making sure everything is okay, making sure there's a solid. They're very, very good, very chill birds. Um, <laughs> Clarence is 
very tractable. He likes coming up for nest material and fish. Ooh. Um, Octavia has slowed down a little bit in recent years. She's 28. It's okay. I've slowed down too. Yep. <laughs> um, but she's definitely, she kind of does take that grandma role because the younger birds will, you know, get up in her face and they're like, I'm a big bird. And she's like, no, no you're not no. a big bird. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's cool. So they have personalities. So they, they are, they're all unique and oh, yeah. one way to tell them apart sometimes. Yep. And it's fun when you look at the family trees to yeah. see who takes after who. You can see that. Yeah. So like, if I can oh, find, yeah. let me see if I can find Killer. So Killer and Duke are... Clarence and Octavia's sons. Now, those two names are totally different. Yes. Octavia and Clarence. Yes. Killer and Duke. Killer has really <laughs> sharp toenails. Oh. He's, so he's a very gentle bird. He just has really sharp toenails. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. He's earned it then. And I'm not actually sure how Duke got his name. He's very funny. He's a very funny bird. Oh, there you go. That'll work. <laughs> um, so Killer is very much like his daddy. He loves okay. collecting things. He'll come up to us. He'll jump in your lap if you let him. Oh, wow. Whereas Duke is like, I'll come over for food, but space, distance. I'm a puffin. Um, yeah. You're not. Yeah. Okay. And they're all in that corner, man. Yeah, no, this that's is a way. challenge. She can show, she can show the, the, the corner, <laughs> Megan. No, and that's fine. That's the two is cool. I do just a second ago. Yeah. It got a little brighter in here. Yeah. Is that true? So that's true. That's I didn't make true. that up. No. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's okay. No one is getting sick. We're all good. All right. Good. So yeah, so a little bit lighter. <laughs> yep, we turn up our light system um, to reflect the Alaska light schedule. Oh wow. It's how we keep the birds on track for their yearly calendar of events, is with the lights. For breeding and everything. Yeah, so the oh, day length wow. tells them what to do. Uh, so we are pretty, pretty serious about making sure we turn up the lights at the right time. <laughs> and that's something to think about, right? So when we talk about zookeeping as a profession and it's just an amazing thing, there's so much more you have to do. It's not just feeding. Yeah. It's understanding natural history, understanding biology, understanding the ecosystem where they're coming from. Yep. Then implementing it. As, as best you can. As best yeah. Well said. No, no, that's yeah. very well said. The best you can, because sometimes you can't do it all. We try. What about the rock wall? Is there anything cool with the rock wall? It's painted, I see. It is painted, um, except for all that white. Mm -hmm. All that paint. all that white is poop. poop. <laughs> you didn't, we didn't paint that. No, we did not. The birds did. <laughs> Megan, Megan, that, that's poop. That's a lot of paint. Sorry, digital friends. I know it's in the morning, but that's poop. Really, that's poop. It's not. But our digit, but our graphics team, our exhibit team is so good. Oh, they're they're great. So like all the <laughs> the nice pretty orange. That's okay. all like mossy, you know, paint job. But all the white, the birds just added their own touch. <laughs> uh, it's. Yeah. I'm gonna get you a shot for a second. <laughs> it's, it's up, up there. there. Yeah, the wall is 28 feet. 28 feet. And. Predominantly, that was where our auklets used to go. So, oh, yeah, the little auklets. Yeah, that so, auklets. yeah, we um, we are the only facility that houses parakeet auklets currently. Oh, wow. And Squirt is our only parakeet auklet. Oh. Um, so, there's no current plans to bring in more. There's a lot of other alcid species. That's the family of these guys. Oh, nice. Um, so all of our birds are in that group. There's a lot of other auklet species specifically. Okay. So there's more of them in other places. So we're not going to bring any more of Squirt's, Squirt's friends in. Okay. But that's also very responsible, right? Yeah. Because if, if, if there aren't any in other facilities, especially AZA, accredited facilities, yeah. that you can't really work with, there's right. really no sense. You don't want to go out and bring them in from the wild if you can avoid it. Right. That's something for, we need to share that with you, digital friends. The zoo world, we're not out collecting animals very often nope. at all. Maybe reptiles once in a while, maybe insects once in a while. That might happen. But for most of your species, if they're not, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I've got you something got, to say. Okay. Are you done? It was over there? It was over there. It was over there? Yeah. It wasn't AJ? Okay. No. <laughs> so we heard a growl. We heard, we heard that little sound. So I'm like, hey, who is that? Um, but yeah, come back to that real quick. So it's to be responsible and to be really caring for your species, if, if other zoos don't have them, there's no sense going out and getting them from the wild. So sometimes a population like the parakeet auklet, in this case, um, will just stop being uh, shared uh, in those accredited zoos. Now, if one of them comes in from the wild, it's not releasable. Great point. We can certainly offer them homes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like you said, we're not going to go out 
and get more. Right. No, that makes perfect sense. If we have a home for them and they come in, they can't yeah. go back. That's a very good point. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, it's a great thing to say out loud. But Squirt and his friends used to go all the way up to the top of the wall because our puffins really didn't. Wow. And they okay. can. Yeah. They just didn't. Choose not to. Yeah. So, I, don't, I wouldn't want to climb that either. I know. And we used to rock climb in here. Oh, you did? Yeah, to attempt to clean the walls. And you can see that was super successful. It worked really well. I mean, you guys <laughs> knocked it out of the park. So, oh, that's yeah. so you used to have to scuba. Yep. Or you have to still have to scuba. Still and have you to used scuba. To, you used to rock climb. Yep. But oh. <laughs> because of most of our birds don't climb up the wall anymore, yeah. it's not something we have to worry about really cleaning I anymore. See. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So we do hose it. And our babies will sometimes climb up and then fly across to our light bay ledge. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of hang out up there. Yep. And again, because the adults really don't do it, it's a safe space for them. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of they're get, getting in their own room. Yep. Uh, I'm going to do my room for a little bit. Yep. And something else I'd like to share real quick. Yeah. Um, can you show them the nest boxes? Can you find the nest boxes? Digital friends, can you find the nest boxes? Give you a second as Megan's showing you the back wall. Can you find the nest boxes? And we made it difficult for you guys because they're, oh, they're closed right now. They are closed right they're now. Closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so can you zoom in on one, Megan? This one right here. That's the one right here close to us? Mm -hmm. And those nest boxes are used, right? Yeah. That's, That's so cool. Pretty much all of our tunnels, our puffin size tunnels, puffin size are uh, claimed right now. We do have a couple pairs, including Mr. Clarence, um, who have two tunnels. Oh, what, what of course. Yep, he has a nice beachfront property right at that ramp, and then he has a, a little mountain cabin <laughs> I just love up that. the way. That is so much fun. That's cool. <laughs> a mountain cabin, beachfront yep. property. Yeah. But they are closed right now. Why would you close them? Why don't you just leave them open all the time? So what, how we choose to manage our birds is we give them access to the tunnels for the breeding season. Perfect. And then once it's past breeding season, we close them. In the wild, they're going to go out to sea in the off season. Yeah, they wouldn't even be on land. So that's our way of sort of encouraging the birds to switch up their patterns. Okay, I like it. That's yeah. kind of fun. We left them open pretty long this year, and they did actually start to shift. So we're like, oh, yeah, we're going to go ahead. We'll clean them. It's a perfect time. Killer. Which one? <laughs> so the only lone puffin out in the in the pool right there. So the one kind of by himself in the middle. That's yep. Killer. That is Killer. That's Clarence's son. Hi, Killer. So <laughs> is Killer one of the grandparents? Yep. Killer no is kidding. a grandparent. So we've met Octavius and Clarence a moment ago. They were the great grandparents. We're on Killer right now, which is a grandparent. Yep. If you guys look behind our mirrors, okay. You know, that's kind of difficult. So the mirrors look more like penguins. So yep. Megan, if you if you're showing them that. Mm -hmm. So right behind them is what we're looking now. You're going to see a puffin with a very thin, dark bill. Okay. And that is our baby, one of our babies. Any chance you can get that, Megan? Mm -hmm. Not quite. Ooh, want to trade places right. with me? Yeah, hold on. Camera watchers, be alert. So we're I'm just walking for a fall. second, and Megan's trying not to fall. <laughs> so is Steve. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so right behind her, or the left side there. I think you're seeing. Yep, that is one of our babies. Check the camera, make sure I'm right. Yep, you're right. You got it. Wow. <laughs> and our our babies definitely take after their parents. So let me see if I can do the explanation <laughs> without going crazy. Um, one of our, our older chick, um, she acts just like her daddy. She's very calm, very chill. She comes up to us and will hand feed already at three months old. Wow. Which is nuts. Um, her sisters act just like their mama and they're very feisty and very loud personalities in your face, very determined girls. And we oh, love, love that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love independent women here. Well, yes. <laughs> Strong ladies. Um, and then Killer's granddaughter acts just like her mama. Okay. Because she's just a little nervous about new things. Oh, well, all right. And a little uncomfortable about it. She's getting, she's getting brave. She's trying. Um, but she loves to snuggle into corners and kind of hide from us. That and that's very right. much like her mama. Um, and then our other girl, we're, we're still waiting to figure her out. She's just a little mystery at this point. Maybe too much of a mix of everybody. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see because 
her parents have very unique personalities. So we're hoping she becomes a, a strong, independent lady. But she might end up more like her daddy, and that's okay. Gotcha. That's so much fun. Yeah. Hey. Good stuff. Well, the other, other thing that I'd like to share real quick um, is we talk about enrichment um, with a lot of other animals. I mean, these puffins have an amazing habitat. Surely that's enough enrichment for them. I mean, it's a lot. And they're also very socially enriched because, as you guys can see, we have a big colony. We have almost 30 puffins in here. I mean, it's a little hard. They're all in that tiny space <laughs> at the moment. Um, and it's probably because we're over here and they're like, wow, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. But they have a lot of social interaction, okay. which is awesome. Um, but yeah, we give them all sorts of different kinds of enrichment. And oh, you do? Yeah. Beyond, just, beyond the habitat itself? Beyond the habitat. Wow. We like adding things to it. So like those ramps that Clarence and Octavia are under, we can move them around. We can okay. take them out. Um, we've got little floaty things that we can put food on. They yeah, can stand on. Okay. Yep. And then we'll give them nest material. Oh, wow. Um, so I've got a bag full of puffin feathers that we'll give um, them. <laughs> no kidding. Yep. Okay. So we, we collect these. These are their feathers. When oh, they wow. molt, we just collect them. Okay. And we use them for enrichment around the building. Mm. And all sorts of different things. The puffins love to climb on things. Okay. <laughs> And they love to explore little cracks and crevices. And you can see that in the habitat. So that's been yeah. put in place here. Okay, cool. Yep. Our mirrors are a little harder to enrich, but they're both old men. Yeah. So we oh. let them do their thing. We just need a front porch and a swing. That's right. <laughs> and Squirt definitely does his thing. Yeah, Squirt is the one amazing. <laughs> Squirt kind of has an idea what to do. <laughs> and then there is breakfast being served. Yes. So we... Do provide these guys um, a, several different options for fish, different sizes. Um, right now, we do two feeds a day, so the trays will stay out for a few hours, iced, just to make sure the fish doesn't go bad. <laughs> Don't want it to go bad. No, not a good idea. But we do save the super yummy fish for training with these guys. So, what's a super yummy fish? <laughs> Um, herring is the big fish that Ooh. most everybody likes. It's, Who doesn't love a good herring? I call it the Twinkie fish because it's kind of fatty. <laughs> <laughs> you want a couple, you don't want like a ton of them. Right. So, I love that. You know. Um, Zookeeper lingo. There you go. But a lot of what we do with these guys isn't what you normally think of as training. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of proximity training. So come to your name, come to me. Okay. And that helps us like... Clarence and Octavia are older birds. Clarence has arthritis, just like I have arthritis. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we can see that he's walking good and if we have to give him meds, that we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So get him moving around a little bit. Yeah, just getting them comfortable coming up to us too is a big thing because, I, I mean, they're all in the corner. I can't yeah. see anybody right now. Yeah, yeah. So if someone is sick or someone is hurt, I need them to at least be comfortable with me walking around. Sure. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Yep. So we use that that super yummy fish to make us positive and make them want to kind of be around us. But at okay. the same time, they can go and eat whenever they puffing. want. They're yep. They're definitely still wild birds. <laughs> we hear a lot of times uh, keepers talking about building up that trust. Yep. We always, well, we use like the, the bank account analogy. Right. So you always want to be in the green. If you got to deduct from the bank, you don't ever want to go past zero. That's always bad. There are fees incurred, all that stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you really don't want to even incur a fee with a puff thumb. No. Or a that would not be Gosh, no. That's fair. That's very I fair. I hear you, Simon. Simon is the one grunting at us. Oh. <laughs> well, let's see if we can be quiet just for a second. Maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get lucky. Of course not. Of course not. Don't ever work with, with children or animals. Mr. Q, Simon. Right. Well, that's fun. Well, let's thank you. So, anything else you want to share real quick, or you think we're good to go? That's some pretty, and we really want to talk about the intergenerationality. That's so cool. We've got great grandparents, grandparents, parents, and this year's, what's the name of a baby puffin? Her name is Nessie. Nessie. <laughs> Love it. Yep. As well as should be. Nice. It works well. She likes to hide, so she's named after an animal that hides. Right. Perfect. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah. We'll let you do your thing. Were you going to put the, were you going to put the uh, feathers out, or you just want to head back? 
Up to you. Let's toss some, we'll give uh, Clarence some moss. Oh. he really likes moss. All right. So we'll let Melissa do her thing, we'll let Clarence do his thing, and I'm gonna step back behind Megan for a second. <laughs> oh, look at that. That was fun. Choice and control, as they say. Can if he wants to or not. Remember, a lot of the training, a lot of the even the enrichment, getting the animals to move around a little bit. So now they now Melissa could watch and say, okay, yes, walking good, moving good. And then look at everybody else coming, Megan. Everybody's like, oh, Keeper, Melissa's in here with stuff. I really hope you can hear that. Simon. So this is just kind of like a gathering, just kind of like, hey, what's what's there? Something new out here? Let's check, see what Melissa, see what keeper Melissa has. Mom and her two sons. That is so neat. Look at them all coming over to say, hey, Keeper Melissa's awesome. She's got gifts. Look at the one up front with all of the moss in his mouth. Right. Who is that? That's Killer. Is that Killer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Squirt's like, hey, don't forgive me. So the bird on the grave, that's Killer's daughter. Okay. That's mom. That's Nessie's mom. That's Nessie's mom. And yeah. Nessie's who we saw a second ago yeah. on the, with the black bill. Remember that, Digital Friends? Nessie had the black bill. That is really cool. So we've seen everybody then. Yeah. We saw all four generations. Yeah. Ah, that is so cool. It doesn't get old, does it? Oh. If you didn't hear, Melissa said, killer's mad because the tunnel is closed. It's like, yeah, well, you know, hey, what? Right, right, right. He'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. Wow. That was so much fun. That little end of that was cool at the end. Oh, got somebody in the water here, Megan. I don't know if you, don't know if you can see that or not. So we'll also use this for training. That's that moss. Because it's something that they want. It's something that, as you can see, they're willing to come up to us for. Yeah. And they can't get full, like with fish. Right. Great point. This is more something just to manipulate, something to move, something yeah. to pick up. But it's worth it to come over to something scary because we're all in here. We're yes. scary. Well, look at look how good they are. I mean, they all after you, after you went, you started providing that. They went. Oh, you know what? They're not doing anything. They're not coming towards us or anything. So this is okay. Yeah. You're so silly, dude. Oh, that's lovely. I love it. Wow. All right. Well, yeah, you can't beat that to end things. That was amazing. How much fun was that? Dear friends, hope you enjoyed seeing these amazing birds today. So from the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro, North Carolina, right smack dab in the middle of the state, and we are in the seabird habitat of the zoo 
in the North America section towards Rocky Coast. Keeper Melissa has been giving us amazing information on the puffins, talking about some really cool intergenerational things going on here. We have four generations of puffins on Habitat. We'll be with you again the third Wednesday of the month around 10 o'clock. Y'all stay safe. We can't wait to see you again soon. Take care. Bye, y'all.